Hey everybody, how's it going? Bear here again, bringing you another Operator Spotlight video. Uh, for those new to the channel and this little series that I'm doing, um, these are these videos are focused on specific operators, and I build a team around them. Um, and it's, it can usually be either uh, just people don't really have ideas for the specific operator, or it could be deemed uh, just not a very good operator. So I'm just here to help make sure that every operator has a home with the list. Um, and but this one here, it wasn't uh, it wasn't that big of a mountain to climb. Uh, hint hint. But uh, for today's operator spotlight, we have Montagne or the mountain. Um, so yeah, here we have uh, Monty. He is uh, probably just the most protective attacker that the board game has to offer. Um, so let's dive into it a little bit. Uh, he is a shielded operator, so by default he has minus two protection. Uh, if he's, you know, just by himself. Uh, and then with his, if he has multiple sources of protection, he actually gets an upgraded version of it. So instead of getting just the minus three hits that... Uh, everyone else would typically get he gets minus four hits instead so if he's being wall banged or if he is by an obstacle gaining cover from that or even if he is contesting entryway spaces from the upper floor he will have up to uh, four hits uh, of damage reduction uh, and then you've got his uh, ability so basically you can turn his minus his normal minus two protection or light protection uh, his ability just upgrades that to a heavy protection or minus three hits. Um, that's really all he does. He's pretty straightforward, uh, pretty aggressive, aggressive, but not uh, not aggressive in the sense of like you're going to be taking enemies out with him. But like you can just use him to push into a room, uh, things like that. So um, specifically with this build, build, I'm trying to. There's honestly only one way to break this, and I, you know, I, I think some people might be a little bit upset with me, but if you're going to run Monty, there's only one way that you need to be running Monty, and that is with operators who can flash. So, helping Monty today, we've got Blitz, Ying, Zofia, three attacking operators who are really good in the close to mid-range gunfights, uh, but they all have flash, so... Blitz and Ying, they essentially do the same thing. Ying just gets a little bit more uh, versatility where she can use her ability vertically, um, as well as she can use her ability behind cover via a light wall or a barricade. Uh, Blitz kind of just has his shield for that. Um, and then for Zofia, you have uh, more of like a, an aggressive slant on stunning where you can also potentially do damage. Um, and she can also ignore one barricade. So whether you know an enemy's there or not, uh, use Zofia. At least you'll get the stun, even if it takes you your second activation to reveal that operator or not. Um, and then you, if, if you get to do the damage, there you go. You get to reveal them. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of the core. You do have two shielded operators between uh, Monty and Blitz. Uh, one thing that I would like to point out with shielded operators is that they are treated as obstacles because they have shields. So if you think of it as, um, and obviously operators block line of sight. So if you have another operator who is adjacent to one of your shielded operators, and if they are leaning, they will actually benefit from cover from your shielded operator. So that is something to take note of. Uh, that's also written in Monty's ability where... A leaning operator protected by Monty's shield also receives heavy protection minus three damage rather than light protection minus two. So, um, and then the last slot that we filled in here because everything else is pretty self-explanatory, uh, we've got Buck. So, I went with Buck because he, his ability is uh, good in a lot of ways, but he also really helps out uh, Blitz and Ying for their ability. Ying does have the vertical mechanic that you can use but also the the extra layer to that that buck brings is with his ability with his line of, with the line of sight version of it you can actually turn a non-vertical room into a pseudo vertical room 
whereas you could have Ying or Blitz up there, and with the hold ceiling token in a non-vertical room, you can use either of their abilities to then flashbang the whole room, right? So Buck just gives you access to more rooms should you need it. Uh, he also brings in good close to medium range, uh, as well as additional uh, orange destroy, so that if you need to get through walls and things, that's what you can do. Um, and I guess I, I should have gone over it. For those who don't know what the stun mechanic does, that is these little yellow uh, exclamation marks, uh, stun makes the, or sorry, an operator who is stunned, instead of rolling whatever their uh, range outcome is with uh, across their different ranges, they only get to roll two yellow. So if Blitz is stunned, he only gets to roll two yellow instead of two yellow and two orange. Um, and you know, and that just, that applies for all three of their ranges whenever they do get into gunfights. So yeah, that's kind of really it just for like helping just strengthen Monty, right? Like he just protects himself. He protects his teams. Um, and then you're just, they're just doing significantly less damage. Um, and it also really helps because you've got, you have six flashes between three operators, plus an additional up to two more flashbangs from your uh, tactical inventory. So you you can stun at least once every round, or you can stun multiple operators in a round, um, possibly giving you more control of the board uh, than the opponent, because the last thing a defender wants to do if they are stunned is push forward into it. Um, Things like that. And then also with Buck, just because he can make those uh, hold ceiling tokens, that also benefits you if you need to smoke something off, if you need to drone a room, and if you are using that, you know, sort of with the non-vertical room uh, aspect of it, as well as like frag grenades if you need to just get a little bit of damage in somewhere, or if you're using it to take out some barricades or barbed wire, things like that. All right, so... If I'm playing Monty, this is what I'm bringing. You have three operators that heavily support him. You have your fifth slot, which helps support some of your other operators. You have two operators with shields, right? So you could have two, uh, sort of like two spearheads pushing in, either from the same side or trying to, if you're getting a pinch or flanks going on. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of really good close to medium range across all your operators. Um, now... On to the, the good bit uh, that I, I usually like to do as well. We've got some additional picks that you could make should you be playing pick and ban. Uh, you know, if your operators are getting banned or if they're picking an operator or operators that your team's not really suited for. So with these, and I'll just scoot these guys down. I, I have quite a bit, right? But I've kind of I've broken it into like two categories. So... Over here on the left, you have Jackal and Finca. Uh, specifically, uh, Jackal and Monty kind of have like a wombo combo, where if you use Monty as a hatch bully on the upper floor, and if you are contesting entryway spaces, long story short, if if you are having those exchanges of fire up upstairs, um, one, Monty is getting minus four hits, right? because he is shield and because you are getting additional protection because an exchange of fire in the upper floor is under heavy cover. Um, so you're, you're able to do that, but then also after the exchange of fire, the defender is now located and they're in the upper floor, which you can then use Jackal's ability to shoot them from the upper floor. So probably not going to get a guaranteed kill. You are only rolling two yellow and a red with that. But it's just a, another thing to think of, um, especially if you notice that the other team has a lot of defenders with really good close range, um, or if it is someone that you're playing against that you knows that you know is really good at utilizing the upper floor. Um, and then Jackal's just like a good pick. He's got the orange destroy as well as the just if the opposing operator is moving to or from their upper floor area, they just get located. Right, so that's very strong in the early games um, whenever you're trying to figure out like which operators are real, which ones aren't. Uh, and then kind of another supportive pick uh, with if you are running that Wombo combo or if you are even just using Monty as the Hatch Bully, not really trying to pull off the any Jackal Pings or things like that, you've got Finca, right? So 
if you bring Finca, that does allow you to use Monty several times if you are contesting entryway spaces. And then if he does take some chip damage, because typically you can get about two or three uh, upper floor exchange of fires in before you would have to move Monty and heal him. But, I mean, you you have the support of Finca to be able to do that, which then lets you continue uh, to hold these entryway spaces. Or, should you have to move down to the main floor with Monty, you can have Finca uh, close by. doesn't even have to be in the same room, just because of her uh, reaction is wave. You can just revive Monty as well. Um, so that's kind of just a little bit of like a Wombo combo that you can bring. Um, and then on to this other side. So, while going over this and I started thinking about some things, I think... Monty should be looked at an operator who is very linear in their playstyle. And what I mean by that is that if you use Monty, I think there is very few things that you should do with him. I think you should move him. I think you should use the shoot action. And I think you should use his ability as, as well as Overwatch. So four things. M movement, I guess, doesn't really count. But honestly... I feel like you are losing a lot of potential if you are not shooting, overwatching, and using his ability. Like, all of them combined. But even his ability, I feel like his ability should be used every single time you get to activate him. Right, because it's just, it's so much damage that he can potentially dodge. And if they, uh, if your opponent isn't bringing C4 or anything like that, like, it can just, it really helps out Monty. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what got me thinking about, uh, like, action economy, right? And then, in my opinion, for Monty, as I stated, you need to be using his ability and then follow that up with either a shoot action or an overwatch. That being said, I'm sure that there are some other operators who I could probably figure out should do the same thing as him. But then that got me thinking, you know, specifically about action economy, and then because you're going to be using Monty for just doing specific things, there's got to be operators out there who can help you uh, sort of expand your action economy. And there definitely are. On the attacking side, here's at least just six of them. I, I didn't want to pull out every single operator that could help. Um, but yeah, and I've separated all of these uh, operators into different categories. But uh, yeah, let's start with... Fuse and Kali. So specifically what these two operators do, uh, Fuse, he can, uh, he destroys all gadgets in a room that are not always visible. And always visible gadgets are always cameras. Um, so that's what he does. He, ba he gets rid of gadgets in a room that are not cameras. So he gets rid of uh, Malusi's Banshees. He gets rid of Bandit's uh, battery charged uh, barbed wires and he just gets rid of the regular barbed wires that the defender gets to deploy uh, and then Callie on the other hand she does the opposite she destroys always visible gadgets which are always cameras and she gets rid of barricades right so the way that I kind of look at that just between these two operators is you know you know your goal is to move in with Monty into a room but you can use one of these two operators first to to get rid of any elements that you wouldn't want monty to have to get rid of right so for fuse you you use his uh you destroy a, a barricade and then you go upstairs and then if you're able to use his ability you use it vertically and then you destroy any of the barbed wire then you can move monty in now you don't have to use the destroy action with monty you get to move him um you could potentially use it for something else or you just move them in and then you overwatch them right and then you have someone else come in and support him support him and uh, and Callie's the exact same way so uh benefit with her is that she can actually throw through any um component or sorry any partition so light wall fortified wall or a barricade but only one she can't throw through one of each but that itself is very strong, as well as getting rid of like all of the uh, barricades in a room. I think it's super great and cameras. Um, and then next we have Nook and Ayana, 
And I will say these two operators, they kind of do the same thing as Kali because Nock, Nock's ability, she can never receive a locate. And with Ayana's ability, you can use her reaction to get rid of a locate. And to me, those two serve the same purpose, right? So you could you could set yourself up before you have to move Monty into a room. You can move these operators into the room first and then maybe destroy the camera the next time. Or if your barricade is already uh, destroyed, if your opponent has placed their camera in a good spot where you couldn't normally get to it unless you moved into a room, move in with one of these operators, destroy the camera, then you can you know put them into Overwatch things like that. Um, Ayana kind of brings just a little bit more to the table, but it also still goes towards um, sort of saving your action economy with her second reaction, where she can basically ignore uh, trapper reactions, which is nice. Um, and I just think with her, it is really strong because all she has are reactions, thus saving, like, you know, you can unlocate yourself and destroy a camera, and you've only used one action. You still have an action left to use. Right? And then last but not least, we do have Twitch and Flores, who yet again are basically doing multiple things at once, thus saving on action economy. For Twitch, you've got a drone that can get rid of electronics. Again, she does the same thing as Callie, just in a different form. Or you have Flores, who has a drone who basically destroys everything around it. Um, but on top of that, they, these drones will also locate. So that sets you up for wall bangs, uh, should you need that. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's about it. That pretty much covers it without having to go through so much insane detail. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, I will apologize to those who thought that I might be taking my Monty list in a different direction. But stun's just the way to go. Like that's there's I don't think that there's anything that you should do other than some of these other recommended picks. Um, should you have to tailor your list uh, to counter or to just outperform the attacking side. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. What would you do different as well as uh, give me ideas for other videos that you all might want to see. Is there another operator spotlight? that you might be looking forward to or is there a theme list that you that maybe I haven't already thought of um, but other than that I'll have more videos coming to you guys later thanks for watching